When I was in the middle of my Bioshock video, I learned that Microsoft had acquired Bethesda Softworks. I didn't make a video on this because, well, I was in the middle of my Bioshock video. Those nonsensical ramblings weren't gonna ramble themselves, I mean, come on. But why am I talking about this now? The way I make videos just doesn't allow me to talk about news, because, well, I don't want to, and by the time I get around to talking about it, it's not news. This shit happened weeks ago. I might as well give you my hot take on Secretary of State Seward's purchase of Alaska from Russia. Wow, smooth move, Seward. Really good purchase you made there. We just ended the war against those godless southern traitors. We don't have the money for this. Well, maybe there's oil. Oil? That's what whales are for, Seward. There are perfectly good whales all over the ocean. I ran over two of them on the way to work today. The last thing this country needs is more whales. The goddamn vermin are all over the place. But this acquisition got me thinking. And what was it that I thunk? Well, I thought it. Wow. So it's come to this. Here's the thing. Doom, Fallout, Elder Scrolls. Bethesda owns my favorite video game franchises. Or do they? They aren't the keepers of the flame. They hold my favorite games hostage. And all that's happened is now there's someone else holding the gun. But why do I see it that way? What is it about Bethesda and now Microsoft's ownership of these franchises that feels threatening? I want to show you something. Well, someone, or something. I doubt you could even imagine it. which commanded the stars, giving life its fullest brilliance. The Elden Ring. Oh, Elden Ring. Shattered by someone or something. Don't tell me. You don't see it. Look up at the sky. It burns. What is Elden Ring? Well, it's being made by From Software. And that's it. It was shattered by someone or something. You saw the trailer. That's all that people know. I would like you to go to the Elden Ring subreddit. They've given up hope. Every new game convention, they say, this is it. We're gonna learn something this time. But they don't. They've created fake lore. They post fake concept art and talk about how much fun they're having playing a game that doesn't exist. The poor bastards. They've gone hollow. Obviously, they're just having fun and joking around, and it's actually a super creative outlet. It's fake. It's a meme. But their excitement is not. They cannot wait for this game that they know nothing about. Nothing except... From Software is making it. I'm... A PC gamer. I'm a hobbyist. I like to tinker. I like to mod and play games from before my time. I like slapping rainbow lights on my computer that blind passing pilots. And a woman's touch is a mystery to me. A PC is the fastest, most responsive gaming platform because it's also expensive as fuck. Don't let PC master race dickheads make you feel like a peasant for making the right purchase decision for you. Those guys are awful and I should know because I'm one of them. I spent enough money to end world hunger on a big box covered in Christmas lights. That does not make me a part of the master race. That makes me an asshole. I'm no better than a filthy weeaboo buying the fanciest of body pillows. Or a billionaire purchasing only the finest of children. Which is fine. It's fine. Well, not the pedophile thing or the weeb thing, obviously. They'll both be burning in hell. But me being a bit of an elitist. You know where I'm going with this. I have absolutely zero interest whatsoever in buying another box. 
because I already have the best box. It's the best because I ensured it was the best through rigorous research and by hand selecting each individual part and by covering it in Christmas lights because I'm a retarded man-child. Now Microsoft has been pretty cool the past few years. Irregular Fonz, bringing old Xbox exclusives to a platform that doesn't suck ass. It just so happens that Xbox exclusives suck ass. And what is it you call this one? Halo. Huh. And, uh, why is it good? Everyone's forgotten. Uh, and what else do you have? Gears of War. Uh-huh, and why is that good? Everyone's forgotten. Ah, yes. Okay. Do you know if Sony's gonna start doing this? Why does everyone always ask me that? I love Bloodborne. So why haven't I talked about it? It's being held hostage. Oh, Sony. Sony is interesting in that they do this ah, thing. What oh, fuck, what's it called? Oh yeah, pride. They have pride in what they put their name on. It's a seal of quality. I feel they're the only publishers that still, you know, have pride in what they make. Have you noticed that? Oh wait, Nintendo. Huh. They sort of, uh, they, they sort of both do that, don't they? I mean, I've never played a Sony nor a Nintendo game that felt like, you know, Shitty, cash-grabbing, microtransaction-filled, lowest common denominator pandering trash. Sony's exclusives are almost, well, I mean, highbrow is not the right word, but something like it. I think Sony's games are too dependent on being cinematic, which I hate, but still, they're well-presented, polished, and just, you know, generally feel like games made by artists because they want to entertain, as opposed to games made by some executive because he has another child to buy. And Nintendo, well, I'm not a big Nintendo fan, unlike some terminal illnesses you may know. This is literally the first time I've mentioned them. I mean, why is that? Nintendo? Just... Just put the gun down. Never. Nintendo is the Disney of video games, for good or ill. The stuff they make is toothless, but they also place great importance on brand integrity. Nintendo makes toys, and they know it. Most games are toys, they just so happen to be covered in blood, tits, and explosions most of the time. But Nintendo's toys aren't covered in any of those things, nor the dreaded microtransactions. Nintendo absolutely does shitty things. <clears throat> <coughs> but they still have this aura of prestige to them. They've been fucking coasting since the Wii, but I'm not being dismissive, because they haven't been coasting on nostalgia. Well, not just on nostalgia. Fucking Sega did that, and you know what happened to them? I'm seriously asking, what happened to Sega? I saw him last week huffing spray paint and mumbling something about a blue hedgehog. Please, call this number if you've seen Sega, I'm getting worried. But like, don't call me before 8am or after 6pm, I mean I'm not that worried. It's Sega. No, Nintendo has been coasting on prestige and brand integrity. They don't exploit Mario or Zelda or whatever that third one was. They hold them up high. Mario Odyssey is a bubbly, energetic, and delightful experience. Breath of the Wild is the only open-world game this decade, other than Skyrim, that, to me, understands what an open world is supposed to be. It's about adventure, not activities, and Breath of the Wild felt like an adventure. I have no nostalgia for Nintendo, but their games are still excellent. They're the biggest name in gaming. You can find an uncontacted Amazonian tribe and they'd still be down to play Mario Kart with you and will definitely stab you if you use that blue shell bullshit. Because Nintendo understands that you don't exploit big name franchises with massive fan bases. When you touch those franchises, you bring your fucking A game and make the best game you can. Both Nintendo and Sony make high quality, polished, well-crafted, and often single-player experiences with no microtransactions that are actually enjoyable. Because they don't want my money. They want me. Oh, I know they do. Who can blame them? I mean, look at me. They don't just want my money, they want all of my money for the next five years. They want me in their ecosystem. They want me buying their hardware and buying games from their storefront. They want me buying their controllers from their website and rebuying all their old games on their new consoles. Oh, there are microtransactions, all right. Every time I buy an online subscription or a digital game, they get their piece of the pie. You know why the PS5 Digital Only Edition is $100 cheaper? 
It's certainly not because a Blu-ray drive is $100. Archaeologists unearth busloads of those things, along with whale skeletons covered in tread marks for some reason. What does it mean, Cornelius? Aliens, Jonathan. Or maybe some YouTuber made a shitty joke. Sony and Nintendo have prestige, something that is in rapidly dwindling supply in the video game industry. I mean, I can't think of a big third-party publisher that actually seems to care what they put their name on. But there are some fat strings attached to that prestige. They exercise quality control and don't peddle trash because they know that a name is everything. Sure, you can burn down years worth of fan goodwill for $60 pre-order, you know, once or twice, but a console? literally hundreds of dollars? What little interest I do have in Sony and Nintendo consoles isn't based on the fucking box. The box is trash, I got a better box already, but they publish gold. Their names carry weight in an industry that has forgotten the true value of a good name. Bethesda used to have prestige. And I mean, id software. Come on, the masters of doom. I've used this quote while talking about Bethesda before, but... Trust takes years to build, seconds to break, and forever to repair. It seems that having a good reputation and prestige is just not profitable anymore. What is prestige, customer loyalty, quality control, or even a legacy next to a mountain of cocaine and hookers? I mean, come on, which are you gonna pick? When I tell people that my favorite hobby is making YouTube videos about games, what do you think their reaction is? Oh, okay. Can we talk about literally anything else? Because this is what they imagine. Yo, 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 what up guys? It's your boy, DJ PC here, coming at you live from my wife's boyfriend's closet. They let me record here sometimes if I've done all my chores and I've been a good boy. All right, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look for uh, McCree, all right? There's a pro strategy for McCree. He's one of these guys. Oh, he's in the middle. Hit, hit the middle bottom of the screen, and that's McCree. So you're going to click on him, and then what you're going to do is you're, you're going to go find an enemy, right? That's the first key to Overwatch is you need to find guys to shoot. And if you find guys to shoot, you're going to notice they got like body parts and the very top part that's called a head and if you hit that you do extra damage that is called a headshot that's what we call it, a headshot in the mlg community all right guys thanks for watching they imagine five fortnite youtubers who've sworn because why would they imagine anything else but that's not what i make because why would i you think i'm in this to be successful you think i want financial security? I maintain a certain level of quality for my videos because there's no reason not to, and they're a passion project. But what if there was some soulless fuck in a suit demanding me to release my videos as fast as possible at all times? What did you just say? Oh, uh, nothing, Mr. Carrot Cake. Uh-huh. I want that video of top 5 Fortnite YouTubers who've done the sex on my desk by the end of the day. Of course, sir. I was just finishing up the thumbnail. Uh, how many red circles did you want? How many red circles do I want? Now what do you think? All of them? Yes. All of them. Coming right up, sir. You want to hear something nobody has ever said before? Why do I make video games? <laughs> well, the fantastic hours and great pay, of course. You make games because you love them, and nobody loves rushed trash. I can only imagine how it must feel to get a job working at a company with as much prestige and history as Konami, Blizzard, or Bethesda. You want to live up to that history. When you saw those names on the box as a kid, you knew that whatever was in that box was outstanding, and you want to carry that legacy. You could make more money somewhere else, you could get better hours somewhere else, but you want to make games. But then you're forced to rush out trash that doesn't live up to that name on that box that used to be a seal of quality. You don't keep the flame. You're forced to load that gun that keeps the games you used to love hostage. Bethesda fucked up their reputation. They cashed Fallout in, and have been jamming shitty microtransactions into games that are otherwise great. They were holding that gun to Doom's head. 
I was so sure that Eternal was going to be awful. It was going to be a rushed mess jammed with microtransactions because why wouldn't it be? It was what I expected of them, and that's what their reputation had become. But then it was delayed. They missed out on that holiday sales window. Then when it did come out, it absolutely fucking ruled. Pete Hines said it was due to the mistake Bethesda made with Fallout 76 and that they wanted Eternal to be the best it could be. I still feel like they're holding my favorite games hostage. Sometimes it be like that. It takes time. They'd burnt their reputation to the ground for the insurance money. But now, someone else is holding that gun. And while they too would break my knees for $10, I do hope Microsoft has learned from example. To stay in the hardware business, a good reputation is key. When Sega left the hardware business, they resorted to pimping out their IP like every other publisher, and where are they now? I'm seriously asking. Please call this number during a reasonable hour. I'm getting scared. When Valve started pushing a VR headset, they had to make a game again. And guess what? That game was outstanding and showed up every other developer when it came to VR. It's unfortunate that third-party publishers have forgotten the value of a good reputation. If your name is strong enough, if you just push goddamn gold that's polished to a mirror shine, your fans will market your game for you. Those poor hollows over at the Elden Ring subreddit are so goddamn excited, and I will admit, I'm one of them. Because I just have zero doubt that Elden Ring will be fantastic. I was disappointed in Sekiro because it wasn't what I wanted. It forced me into a playstyle I don't enjoy, but I didn't feel ripped off. It just didn't feel like a rushed game designed to steal my money. It felt like a polished and confident game made by people with a vision and pride for what they make. Elden Ring and Cyberpunk 2077 have people absolutely chomping at the bit for them because the people behind those games have proven themselves to uphold a high standard. I hate exclusivity because I've got the box that I want, but the best thing about it is that it demands a good reputation. And with Microsoft now trying to be a regular Fonz and putting all Xbox exclusives on PC as well, I do hope I'm about to get the best of both worlds. I'm glad that Bethesda has been acquired by Microsoft, because they're now in a position where they really can't afford to rush out garbage anymore. But they had been trying to regain their reputation and making strides towards doing that. Really, it just makes me sad that they couldn't just maintain a good reputation for its own sake. But Microsoft has a history of not understanding what exclusives are really supposed to be, and I fear Bethesda will just join the ranks of Rare. I fear that Microsoft hasn't learned from example and will just see exclusives as another way to pinch pennies from their customers, as opposed to the gold standard that they're supposed to be. But the real thing I want you to take away from this video is to put Bloodborne on PC, you fucks! I'll burn Sony to the ground, I swear to God! Behold.